All right, I just got done watching uh, Inuyasha season one, episode three, down the rabbit hole, back again. Uh, so the gem, the the gem, the sh the, uh, the sacred jewel has been shattered. Uh, but uh, you know, very quickly in this episode, we uh, are established that this uh, sacred jewel, each each little piece of it that you find, is, is enough to cause me destruction that's how powerful this jewel really is um which is great that's a great that's a great premise i think it's like you know it's a step and it's also established that there's hundreds maybe thousands of pieces of it out there and it's kind of just like that's kind of interesting it's kind of exciting right um but uh outside of this episode opens with uh you know she's it's it's immediate fan service and she's in like a cold lake and she's complaining about how it's not a hot lake and how badly she wants to be clean. And then we go into this whole weird recap, double down, like this is what happened in the first two episodes. This is what it means. This is how important the first things that happened in the first two episodes. And that's great. And, and it's because it's just a double down on the appeal of the uh, strange escapist fantasy that this, uh, you know, show – has and it's interesting because it's called Inuyasha, but it is clearly about uh, Kagame, right? It's about Kagame. Um, and they speak everything out to you. You kind of ask questions, but then the show cuts to the next scene and immediately answers it. You see this, you know, at least in the first three episodes so far, with uh, Kade, with uh, Kikino's younger sister. Um, and, uh, well, like, you know, early on in this episode, it's, this show's great. Great exposition, and great storytelling. Like the, the way that it just keeps exp keep, just keeps explaining stuff. It's very directly, and Kagame is not like an idiot who doesn't ask these questions, and they're not beating around the bush with anything. They're just going right for it, and I love it. Um. Uh, so yeah, she is like the jewel is clearly like it's her thing, and she. So they say in this episode that she can sense where the jewel is going to go, where the little piece of the jewel. It's her and Inuyasha's combined strength, which, you know, given the context that they provided to us in the first two episodes, that's something I believe. And then, you know, it flashes to this quick scene of um, this you know, big, bigger, bad villain, you know, uh, which reminds you of something, you know, I don't know, I don't know what it reminds you, but she, this big, bad villain is this, this, she's sitting in a room full of skulls, just skulls big bad lady villain and she's like oh i'm gonna get i'm gonna get him and she shows up pretty quick and you know there's some cute scenes in this episode i can't recall them off the top of my head but um i've realized you know with this show is so far compared to again i'm gonna keep saying this for a bit but the other shows that i've, I've been watching other animes um is that these characters are already developed and that we're just getting you know and I like that. Like, Kagame has, like, got some depth for real, right out of the gate. Um, and it's so much more capable than your average you know, protagonist in, in, in this type of anime. And I, I love that. It's so much more interesting. There's so much... It's it's there's. I feel like I haven't had many repetition in these episodes. I am actually getting a proper long game story. It's definitely tropalicious, for sure. Um, but... You know, so this this villain was like she has like this hair, magic hair, spider web thing that like attaches to people. You can't really see it, but, but Kagame could see it, and uh, Inuyasha could see it. And they were trying to cut out the hair. She was was it was it ever there? Ninja puppet master, spider strong lady. That's what they call her. Yeah, it's great pacing and stuff. And you know, there's some other stuff. But, oh yeah, can Kagame accidentally gets sent back? home um, by falling into the well. They find her and she's been gone for three days, which makes sense. Three episodes, three days, roughly makes sense. She's back at home and she's confused. But it, the show provides and Inuyasha's coming to go get her. After, like, it was, Inuyasha was trying to bury Kade after the, her getting injured but not really dying because she also has powers and stuff. You know, it's like, the other thing is there's still these questions about, like, what these people, how when I wrote this down too, actually, it was like, you know, what I like almost is that they just do what they do. They're quite powerful right out the gate. Right out the gate, these people are powerful. They're not talking about power levels. You get Dragon Ball. It's big. 
this big uh, little dick sized competition is not happening and shit. These people just have their given powers or have their they're not given powers. But I think the as we go on, based on the fact that she did go home, we're gonna see a maybe a balance between home life, fantasy feudal world or whatever. But yeah, I'm, I'm really liking it and I'm really I really find the relationship between Kagame and Mimigash is super Super unique. And they're just going right for the jugular nonstop. You know, with with the whole like her dom the domination thing with the Sith and all that. And they were they went to the right to the gun with the fan service in this one. They went as far as they could. But uh it's a sincerely engaging uh, saga they are potentially presenting uh, me with. So uh thanks for watching.